I don't know how this thing works. I've got an earphone in my ear and <laughs> it's can quite strange. Okay? Yeah, I can. It's a little bit weird, but I can hear, like, can only hear in one ear. That's all right. <laughs> how are you going? Well, I'm, I'm doing just fine. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. I don't think we've talked on the Skype before. No, we haven't. But just to say hi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One time we said hi, so... Yeah. So how, how are you doing with all those little ones? Yeah, good. Um, Aaliyah's really sick at the moment. She's got a cold, so she's oh. miserable and haven't had much sleep for a few nights. I think the camera's over there. Sorry, I'm looking at the computer, but the camera's over there, so it doesn't look like I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so she, we haven't had a lot of sleep the last few nights, but <laughs> we're going okay. She's, she's getting better, so poor little thing. That's good. Um, I I have I have enormous amounts of respect for you. All those little ones, and you running the household and keeping all that together. I can't imagine what your days are like. Oh, it's busy, but um, sometimes <laughs> everything isn't together. <laughs> so, we actually went um, yesterday on a, our first big homeschooling excursion. Um, to into the art gallery in the city to see the yeah. Picasso exhibit, and it was um, quite an adventure. <laughs> we, <laughs> did you go um, by yourself um, with the kids, or did you? Yeah, just me and the kids, but we had other homeschooling families with us, so like I had other people there to help out and stuff a bit. Um, but we're on the train on the way home by ourselves. Um, and had a, a incredibly drunk guy sitting across from us t trying to talk to us the whole time and it was quite, the boys were freaked out. The, after he got off the train, they said, Mummy, don't let that silly guy get on the train again. <laughs> what was wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing, so, they just uh, don't, they're just, well, that's why you get them ready for the world by taking them out in the world all the same yeah. time. I know, we had to talk about alcohol then. <laughs> Right, right. What it does to them, so. But they so, got they were very excited to tell Mark about the adventure, so. Yeah. I, I guess we should talk about Torah. Were we supposed to, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about specifically? I don't have anything. I don't know what the plan was for today. Mark sort of let me know yesterday, I think, that we were doing it, and I haven't stopped since then, so I haven't thought of anything or what we were supposed to do. <laughs> I, I was I was planning to ask you how you prepare for Sabbath. I think there's a lot of women out there that would like to hear that discussed. That's actually fantastic because I think um, the women do a lot of the preparations, don't they? The men are usually at work and stuff, and the women's they're preparing the household for the Sabbath. That's probably a great topic to talk about. We. Um, generally try to make sure I don't do anything well we don't do anything on the Sabbath so it's our only day of the week where there's no um washing I don't wash any do any loads of washing or anything so I have to do all the washing in the house um on the sixth day to make sure it's all ready <laughs> um and get it all put away and so it's usually quite a busy day for us either that or the day before if we're going to be out all down on the sixth day um, and then do cook some meals and stuff. So we've got something for dinner tonight. We usually just do something easy for lunch and stuff. Um, and a clean. We like to clean the house before the Sabbath, even though we know we're going to have to do it after the Sabbath because everyone's been at home and doing, getting, messing it up. We'd like to have the house clean and everything for the Sabbath. So generally cleaning the house and doing all that. It's quite busy getting ready for it. But it's worth it because it's so nice having a day to do nothing <laughs> every week yeah. and not having to worry about it. I, I, I got caught short today because our days are a little short now and uh, um, the sunset came so quick and we were out trying to find an address and it was the wrong address. We were given the wrong address to find. Anyway, we, we drove around. We spent an hour 
of uh, we had two hours to get everything done, and we spent an hour of that trying to find oh, a second no. dress, and then we didn't have time to get everything else done. So I we got home just at sunset, and then there there were things in the kitchen I I had planned on cleaning up when we got home. So I'm going to have to sit there and look at the dirty kitchen yeah. all Sabbath long. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that happen a few times <laughs> when it's a bit hectic and you don't get everything done. So when, when you, like, after you have a meal or you clean up after something on Sabbath, do you have a tendency to want to wash those, rinse those things off and stick them in the dishwasher? Do you think that that's okay? Well, we, um, our dishwasher's not working now, so I tend we just put it on the bench usually um, or in the sink and maybe put some water in if it's going to, be, go dry or hard or something um, and leave it until and then after sunset I'll wash up all the dishes um, from today I mean it's, it's even even if it was okay to do that I'm not sure whether you should or not I sort of don't I go into real shutdown mode I think on the Sabbath and I think I don't want to I just want to relax so I, I just rather leave them there and get them that night I mean we pack tack, stack them all neatly so it's not taking up the whole bench and then and then I can just get it done. Once sunset's over and the boys are in bed, you know, I'll get the washing up done. Mark might put a load of washing on if we if there's if if there is something that needs to get done for tomorrow. Um, but generally, yeah, we don't we don't do much, anything on the Sabbath. We really just sit around and watch movies with the boys, or play games, or read books, or sleep, or take turns on shifts. Sometimes Mark will go have a sleep, and I'll take the kids, and and vice versa. <laughs> So, do you well, uh, do that? It's it's Sabbath for you right now, isn't it? And, yes, and it is. First, we're have we're starting Sabbath. Yeah, we we generally, you know, what I do, and and I'm and I'm not sure if this is legitimate, but I do tend to want to load things into the dishwasher, just rinse them off and stick them yeah. in the dishwasher, just so they won't be cluttering up the sink. I'm not sure if that's okay, but it's, I'm not really washing the dishes. I've just rinsed them off and put them someplace, you know. No, I, would, I wouldn't think it's, um, yeah, I mean, like when our dishwasher was working, we would rinse and put them in the dishwasher. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's much more than putting them on the bench. <laughs> right, right, right. But, yeah, the most work I do really is, is I always like to prepare a, a Sabbath meal the day before, that's why we call it preparation day. Yeah. And the most I do on the Sabbath really is making sure everything's it, it has to be warmed up, warm it up. Yeah. You know, get it all yeah. out, you know, and more and more I'm concentrating on planning easier and easier meals yes. for warm up. I know it would be great to um have some sort of uh Sabbath recipe book or something <laughs> for meals that are easy to prepare for Sabbath. <laughs> we, we, maybe we could do something like that. That would be fun so, because, like I yeah. said, I've just learned some some easy things just recently, you know, yeah. because it's been so short, mm. not, not mm. much time to prepare for Sabbath on these short days. Yeah, well, we're at the opposite end now, so we're getting the longer days. Right. Um, so yeah, we're finding Sabbath is not starting till about oh eight thirty at night now, um, and so it's sort of we can get home from if we've been out during the day and still get a few things done before it starts. On the other side though, the the night the, the it doesn't end as early. So if you've got you're sitting there waiting to get some things done or something, you're waiting <laughs> for sunset. You've got to wait to quite late, and then you're sort of starting to get tired. But um, okay. But it is nice to have that bit more time beforehand because I know in winter we were discussing how um, by like Mark will finish work at 5, but if he's running late some days, it's not till 5.30 if they've been really busy. And Sabbath was starting at 5.30, so we were sort of, he was talking about having to close the salon um, an hour earlier just to get home in time before the Sabbath starts, you know, and we can just, everyone's relaxing by then. Because we like to have the kids bathed and... and and everything before the Sabbath, like before sunset, so we're not rushing around because you know it's that hectic time of the day with the right. kids um, right before bed. So we try to get a bath and stuff before before the sunset goes down, so so that we can relax a bit more. And um, but then with with it not finishing till eight thirty now, the kids are going to bed at sunset now. So we sort of get everything done, and they're going to bed, and we just relax. Then it's quite nice for us. <laughs> what do you guys do for a Sabbath evening? 
on the Sabbath evening. What what do we do for Sabbath evening? Yeah, what will you do tonight? Well, we we don't do anything really. We just you know we we didn't usually we make sure we've got some candles lit. We like to just have candles lit, even even though it's not you know a lot of people think think that that's required, but it's not. We just do it because we enjoy. It's a, it's our way of recognizing Sabbath here. Let's light some candles because you can't light them after. Yeah. And, and, you know, we might relax, you know, and just sit around and talk. And uh, we don't really do anything. We don't eat. We might have a snack or something yeah. in the evening. Yeah, but, uh, and then Lou and I will go down and watch a movie or something, enjoy being able to stay up a little later because we can yeah. sleep in the next day. So, no, we, we really don't do that much, you know. Not like when the children were little. We used to have a little ceremony, you know. Yeah. Well, Sabbath, we used to break bread. You know, they had the challah. We, okay. we, I would have two loaves. It's a Jewish tradition. They have two loaves of challah, one for, you know, for that evening and one for the next day. And yeah. and we would have wine and we'd have this sparkling grape juice for the children. And we would give the blessing for the bread and the wine. And we would go through the whole little... You know, Kaddish, I think, is the word in the Jewish tradition yeah. for the ceremony. But we, now that the, the boys are grown, we don't do that anymore. It was just to teach them that it's a special day. Yeah. Oh, that sounds lovely. Because we, uh, we've we always talked about wanting to do something with the boys um, to make it a, a tradition sort of thing, like to make it something that they look forward to and get excited about. But we hadn't really gotten into any sort of, habits of, of anything uh, every week anyway so um that sounds like a, a lovely way to sort of bring it in yeah we, we 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 looked into the jewish traditions and although we recognize you know they they light the two candles and then she sits there she closes her eyes and she and does all these and makes these and and it's almost like witchcraft you know i was gonna say it sounded like that yeah oh, but, but we don't do that you know yeah. we didn't and we would light the candles, but, you know, and say, well, the reason we light the candles is because you can't light the candles after the sunset. You know, we start a fire after sunset, and we have the blessing over the wine and the bread. And, yeah, it, it was really nice. And sometimes we'd have cheese with the bread, and that would be, you know, a little dinner. Yeah. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so, I've heard yeah. of some families um, taking, like, using the Sabbath day to – like teach their kids, do scripture lessons with their kids and do coloring activities and stuff like that. What do you think of, of doing something like that on the Sabbath with young children? Do you think that's necessary or? Well, no, I, I think it's good because you, you want, you don't want the whole day to go by without bringing up to her when our, yeah. when our boys were young, we would sit at, it wasn't any given time of day whenever Lou got, got felt like it was time to do it. He would call the boys and we'd sit and he would sit and read to us from scripture and he would just keep going through the book. Wherever he stopped, he would just read until he got to a place where he felt like it was a good place to stop. Yeah. And um, he wouldn't wear them out with it. He would just, yeah. I, I think if he noticed them getting squirmy, yeah. he'd just call it to an end, usually, you know. Yeah. But yeah, we would always, when they were little, we would always make them sit and read scripture. Yeah, every day you did that? Oh, on Sabbath, yeah. Just Sabbath, yeah? Because we were talking about um, that new, actually I've got it here, the book that you sent us, the Torah for Children book. We were talking about um, photocopying the activities out of that and going through that with the boys on the Sabbath so they've got sort of some activities to do and, and basing it all around um, Torah on the Sabbath. I, I think that's an excellent, that's an excellent book to, to start. And, you know, she's going to write more. That's Oh, books. fantastic. And I think she's going to have more books. Yeah, because it's really great. And, and, and I love how it can span for different levels. Like there's stuff there that Josiah can do, it being, you know, like six and a half. And then even right. Micah can do coloring in and things like that and still talk about it. And he's only, you know, two and a half. So there's things that they can all do in the book. So it's really fantastic. We're really excited about that. Yeah, I, I think it's a great book. I, I try to get my grandchildren into it, but I don't want to send the books home with them because they would probably just get lost in the, you know, yeah. if you don't have a regular routine. So when they come here, I make them sit down and read a page or two. I, 
you know. Yeah. How are the, your grandchildren? Um, the oldest one is 11, and then Elena, that's Elijah, and Elena is nine, and yeah. Ethan is eight. Okay. And they still enjoy the activities and the things in the book? Well, you know, the, it's... The oldest one doesn't. The, the Elena and Ethan do. They yeah. they were really excited. I I told and I told Elijah. I said, "Well, Elijah, just read the first three pages." He read the preface, and he. I said, "I didn't know what he was reading." I, so he came back, and I said, "So what did you learn?" He says, "Well, I learned that it's for children of all ages, and it's for <laughs> 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 it's, it's for adults to to help them with their activities." <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it was so cute. And so do you see them often on the Sabbath? Do you do stuff with your grandchildren on the Sabbath or do they live far away? They, well, you know, they, they live about 30 minutes away, but okay. they 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 don't come, you know, come over very often. I used to see them a lot, and but their dad quit doing the intense work that he, he was doing that required a lot of help because yeah. uh, their stepmom would be out of town and he'd need help but he's he's pretty much being you know a full-time dad pretty mm -hmm. much you know he's doing a great job yeah wow it'd be very hard to handle that with um, two parents working and have, having to travel and stuff yeah yeah he uh, yeah, like I said, I used to watch them like sometimes two or three days every yeah. week. Now two or three weeks go by and I don't see them. <laughs> so it's, I really miss them. I was going to say, it would be sad though for you not to see them as much then. Yeah. It is. That's, it's great that they only live um, 30 minutes away though. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it is. But with them going to school and stuff, it's either... He, they had to come and spend the night, really, for me to be able to spend time with them. Yeah. Because there's, you know, they get home. They, they've got their routine. They're 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 very well disciplined children. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And so with um, you just mentioned school, and I thought I'd ask you about um, you homeschooled a bit, didn't you, when you with for your boys um, when they were growing up. I did homeschool, yes. I, I didn't start out homeschool. I didn't know I was going to homeschool. But then Michael, my oldest one, at, when he was like, I, I was putting him in a Christian school. And then when he got to the fifth grade, he was causing such a disturbance in the school because he was teaching the children around him the true name. And oh, he, really? he would refuse to eat anything. He would only eat kosher food and, and he didn't want to participate. He would not participate in any Christmas activities. And, and so finally the, when, when they were registering for school for, at the fifth grade, they uh, wouldn't let me register. And they called me in for a meeting. They said, well, he doesn't really fit in with us. Oh, wow. And I was just like, I didn't know yeah. what to do or what to say. So, and then I was kind of just dumbstruck. And as we were leaving, one of the teachers kind of, she almost kind of snuck around and came up to me and, and handed me some information about a Becca homeschooling. Uh, you know, it's, I didn't know anything about homeschooling at all. Yeah. And so I, I was, I sent off for, and they, they have videos and it, it's a, it's a Christian program too, but, you know, I think it's it's okay to expose the children to what they're going to see in the Christian world so that they yeah. know what is being talked about. Yeah. And did you do that then um, all through school I, for both of them? Well, a after a while I got, you know, after a, a couple of years of that with Michael and then the, the youngest one was school age and, and I got hooked up with a homeschool group and I started being a little bit more creative you know, yeah. because it was, you know, the video, the littlest one wouldn't sit still for the video. So then I started teaching him myself. And then and then we've had a, um, what they called back then, I don't know what they call now, cottage schools. Because they wouldn't go to school every day. They'd just meet for two or three hours, two or three days a week. 
you know, and they just teach them certain subjects, you know. So it's kind of like half, they mm-hmm. had a teacher and a guidance, and they'd come home and I'd work with them through their schoolwork. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we don't have anything like that over here. I did know, I, did, I had heard that they had it over there. And there's a lot of families who um, complain because they'd love to have that, that the balance of both, um, a bit yeah. of a backup and help from the schools and, and be able to do it at home as well. So, um, but yeah, no, we don't have that. But that's that's great. That's a great balance. And did they go right through school doing that then? Well, yeah, pretty much um, until they got into the older up and it took them right up until high school. Now, uh, Michael, Michael kicked up dust at that at his cottage school, and um, so I had to take him out of that because he was just more advanced than yeah. other kids. Because and I'm. I know it sounds like I'm bragging, I probably am, but Michael's an extremely intelligent boy and he we we had him we actually got him registered in uh, college. When he was fourteen he took the um, ex, uh, um, placement test to go to uh, the, the local college here and he got accepted. And so yeah. by the time he was when he was fifteen he was taking college class classes oh, my goodness that's fantastic <laughs> yeah of course you know i think he was too young for that and he, he he had a straight he had a an a whatever the top level a average was in school and then after a couple semesters he started losing interest and his grades started going down and yeah at that time he was 18 so we just took him out and let him go on his own way <laughs> yeah so he, he's been self-educated since then. That's fantastic. Yeah. Adam, I just taught him at home. He, you know, yeah. he's, he, he didn't have that go get him. And he wasn't as, he did, Michael pushed himself. Adam yeah. did. He just, he's just more of a laid back, relaxed kind of, you know, like most artists are. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how their personalities are so different. Um, within a family, like everyone can be so different and the way they learn and the way they do things um, that you've just got to take a different approach to each child um, in how you teach them things mm-hmm. sometimes. So I've noticed that with the kids, that they all learn differently. Like Josiah likes to do book work, whereas Luca likes hands-on things and stuff. So they're all very different. So oh, for yeah. the... For the feasts, do you guys get together like your whole family? Like, um, Michael come over and the kids and all of them. Uh, we yeah we we try to um, like the fast feast. You know the the there's three feast days during the fall feast and and he came and joined us for two of two of the three. You know uh, we he usually tries to come over. We are trying to arrange to have him and. The rest of his family come over. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Lovely. So, what? Um, talking on the topic of the Sabbath, then back to the Sabbath. What okay. um, advice would you give then for people in, in for women preparing for the Sabbath, preparing their home and their families for the Sabbath? I think you just did it. Just get <laughs> you know, get everything prepared on preparation day. That's what you know. That's what we learned how to do is call it preparation day and you know clean up you know cook the, the meal if it, if it needs to be prepared you know cook it all up the, the day before make sure you prepare something that can be heated up in, in an oven if you if I'm blessed with an electric oven so I prepare everything and put it in oven dishes and then when uh, lunch comes for Sabbath that's when we have our main meal I just take all the oven dishes out, stick them in the, in the oven, and yep. warm them up. Okay, great. And um, what about families with young children? Because I know Mark's made the comment heaps of times that um, it's not really a day of rest with young kids because you still got kids to tend to their needs and things. You know, nappies to change and mm-hmm. and you know they're making they're doing they're making as they go around the house. Obviously, they leave a trail behind them half the time. 
of um, <laughs> toys and yes. things and clothes half the time. Our kids tend to end up getting changed six times a day into costumes. Um, what and what would you say for parents with young kids who had it to rest? <laughs> I, was sit, I was sitting here kind of laughing when you were talking about, you know, just not doing anything. It's your only day to take a rest. And I was thinking to myself, how are you going to do that with five children? <laughs> There's no way, you know, and I, I tell you, there, you, you just have to take care of it. And I tell you what, the, the worst feast day is when you've got small children is, you know, Kapoor, when you, you're, you can't eat, but you have to feed these little ones. They've got to eat. And that temptation to take that, taste that food that you're fixing for them or warming up for them. Woo, yes. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, but no, there's really nothing you can do. You have to take care of the, you know. And sometimes I have people call me, that and they are nurses, and and they are their care for elderly. And they say, should you know what can I do? Should you know am I break? And I said no, because I don't think that they're breaking Sabbath, because the, the sick people have to be cared for. Elderly people have to be cared for. Children yeah. have to be cared for. There are certain people that have that calling in life where they have to be there to care for dependent people. Yeah. I don't know how you can get around that. Yeah. There's no way. I think I, I realize that um, Sabbath is, of course, it's still busy, especially compared to how anyone without kids Sabbath would be. Um, but not having to wash clothes for me is a big one <laughs> because that's a big thing that I have to do every day and nappies and all that sort of thing and not doing that on the Sabbath is a big one and not preparing food on the Sabbath because I spend a lot of time, you know, preparing food every day for the kids and then making dinner and making everything that not having to do that on the Sabbath is actually quite relaxing um, as well. So, and ha I guess having Mark at home makes a big difference you know you, during the week I'm at home with the kids by myself so having that extra person to help with everything makes it a bit more relaxing so makes it a bit easier one question I have always which you made me think of just then I have always thought of because I'm seem to always be pregnant and having children um <laughs> is uh, if a, a if a, a Nat's room was a midwife um, and obviously just gets called out because we have um, a lot of midwives around here that just tend to home births and things. Um, so they're independent private midwives that don't, they don't work in the hospitals. Um, but if they were called out, obviously a woman went into labour and they had to, to go to tend to tend to the woman and be there for the birth. Um, would that be just a job that you wouldn't recommend? For I mean, like, what, what, what do they, is that not breaking Sabbath? Because, I mean, they'd have to start their car, they'd have to do all of that to go to a birth. If they if they had a woman in labor, no, you you know you know she'd have to go to the birth and 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 of course she's I, I and I don't say I wouldn't ever say avoid a, a profession like that because where would we be if there weren't any? Imagine a world with no midwives and no mm -hmm. nurses that were yeah. that that were messianic, you know, yeah. like. Well, you know, that'd be like the Jewish people. Leave it to the goyim. Let them do it. You know, d is that really what you want? You, you'd want if if you had somebody in a profession like that, wouldn't you rather have someone mm -hmm. who did have a, a faith in Yahushua and and could pray for you and and be with you and care for you in His name r rather than some yeah you know some some pagan worshiper you know some yeah. witch you know yeah. yeah no that's right that's fantastic yeah yeah so no i i think i think if if you have a calling to be a midwife or a nurse and yes you need to be there on sabbath to to do what you're called to do yeah oh that's fantastic because that's something i've always wondered and thought about if if someone was in that sort of job and i guess that's great to hear <laughs> Those were the things I was hoping we were talking about because I, 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 was, I thought that there would be women out there that would enjoy hearing mm -hmm. hearing about that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And okay. I always get a chance to talk with you. No. I, I have a lot of admiration for you here. You're, yeah. you're something special raising all those babies. You're doing a great job. Yeah, oh, thank you. It was lovely oh. to talk to you. Nice talking to you, Amy. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed talking to you.
next time I will um, try and be a little bit more prepared <laughs> and have, have, have something to talk about as well. Well, I think we did great. Yeah, I know. For our first time, pretty good. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. Bye for you. Have a, have a really nice Sabbath. Oh, thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Shalom. You too. Bye bye. He is good. He is good. He is good. Yahushua is good. Great is his loving kindness forever. Yahushua is good. He is good. He is good. He is good. Yahushua is good. Great is his loving kindness forever. Yeah,